In this video, we're going to talk about how to make a hasty harness, which is essentially an improvised climbing harness. And in order to do so, we need just a small amount of gear. It's gear that you might not normally take on a backpacking trip, but it is likely gear that you would have during a climbing trip, or more specifically, if you were part of a search and rescue team as part of their uh, lightweight kit. Uh, and what you'll need is about five, probably more six meters, six meters of one inch tubular webbing like this. Not very expensive. Almost every climbing gym will have it. And you'll also need one carabiner. Find the center of the webbing by grabbing the two tails, matching them up, and then just sliding it all the way until you get to a loop. And that loop is going to be pretty important because that's where your starting point is. Now, when you actually tie this to yourself or to a, a patient, the knot is preferably going to be on the left side. And that's because if you need that person to repel, it's going to occur on the right side of their body. So you don't want their repelling hand to be getting obstructed by the knot from the hasty harness. So in order to do that, since you need the knot on the left side, you wanna give yourself about an extra six to 12 inches of webbing on that left side. So I'm on the left side of the loop that I've created. I'm gonna pull myself about six to 12 inches, and that's gonna be my new starting point. So we have our loop at our navel, and the easiest way to do this to keep it in place, especially if you're tying it on yourself, is to actually just tuck that loop kind of right into the front of your, your pants. And if you get confused which one has the longer end, this is a good time to look down at the ground and realize, okay, my left hand has the longer end because my knot needs to be on the left side. So you'll start by just letting them drop. You keep that left one in the right position. I'm sorry, the left one in the correct position. And you let those drop and they are sort of going down the inner parts of my thigh. And then you'll actually take your hands and you will reach behind your knees. And I'm gonna keep my head out of the shot. You'll reach behind your knees and grab those tails. And with letting your hand slide, you'll bring those tails around back to the front. And so now I have the two tails going down my inner thighs, around the back of my thighs. This next part is where most people run into trouble, but what you'll need to do is take the tail and get it looped inside the part of the webbing that's running down the inner thigh. And so I'm gonna drop my left tail. So my right tail is over here. I take my hand and I give myself a little bit of room here, or if you're more nimble, you can simply shove it through and grab it. But I'm gonna demonstrate by giving myself some room on the right side, bringing this through that loop, pulling it all the way through. And so it'll look like this. And now I'm gonna take it back to the other side. And then I do the same thing on this side where I loop it through the strand going down the inner thigh, bring it across and bring it back. So now you can start to see I've created a diamond sort of right around the groin. And that starts to look not unlike a typical climbing harness. Now what you'll do is you'll give yourself a little bit of wiggle room here. Some people say that you should pull out the entire amount of webbing that is in there, and I would agree with that. So you give yourself all of the webbing that you need, and now with these tails, you'll circle back around your hips and your spine, and you'll bring it back around and again, and as many times as you can until you get over onto your left side. Now, because I gave myself the right amount of extra length on that left tail, these are lining up pretty well. Now I said six meters of webbing. That's gonna be more helpful for somebody that's got a little bit more girth than myself. Um, but that's a good standard to carry around. Actually six to seven meters is what most people would carry as part of a hasty harness webbing. So at this point in time, you'll simply tie yourself a square knot. And then because we know that under lots of tension, these square knots can actually slip, you will tie just an overhand knot to back it up. And you do that on both sides.
Then with your carabiner, you're going to grab all of the webbing that has come through the middle here. Attach your carabiner and you are set. Okay, once again, the hasty harness, you have the tails going down the inner thigh, coming around the back, wrapped around several times with the knot over on the left hand. And again, this is a square knot with two overhand knots on the side. If you get a lot of extra tail, you're gonna need to control that by tucking it in or tying it off a second time to a different part of the, the harness. But that is the basics of a hasty harness.